Brothers, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic one. So it's been a little while since I've been behind the camera, so uh, excuse the nerves, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll work it out. So uh, yeah, let's, let's, just, let's just do this. So as you can tell by the title, what my plan is, is to take two things that are separately I know are quite good and put them together to hopefully make something that is better than the sum of its parts. So, um, as you know, when you're homebrewing, making with honey, expensive honey is always going to be better than cheap. Because, well, it's cheap, expensive. But you don't really want to spend all the money because, well, why? I mean, I'm sure if you want to spend 30, 40, 50 pound to make a gallon of mead, which is very nice, don't get me wrong, you do that. But uh, I'm not going to, I'm going the cheap way, which is to take the finest, cheapest honey that man can buy and uh, put it together with some flora aspects and hopefully make a very nice mead for very cheap. That is the plan. Is it going to work? I don't know. Individually, they work. Together, will they? Mm. We will find out. So our story actually starts yesterday. So I went out and picked some honeysuckle. Now, unfortunately for me, the honeysuckle here is sort of in places, dotted around, so I had to take a walk. I'm not complaining, I needed the exercise. So I collected approximately two liters in volume using a measuring jug as an approximate guide um, of flowers for a one gallon batch, which I think should be plenty good. Uh, and I have made a tea out of it. The amount of water that you add doesn't really matter, but you kind of want to keep it under your total target because, well, we're going to be adding honey to it, and the easiest way to get honey in a demijohn without messing around is to heat it up using a bit of boiling water to mix it all in, hence why it's this. So my plan was to use two of the cheapest little 75p honeys, uh, 340 gram jars, £1.50 for 680, we'll call it 700 grams of honey, because, well, we round up-ish, that's all we need. But I ate one because it was very tasty and I like honey. Story of my life, I like food. So I went and bought one of my standard 454 jars of honey, uh, the clear stuff, because I am not going to be heating it or messing around with it. If you are going to like mix and match and make some caramel mead and add in this, get the set stuff. Whatever floats your boat. So I've sterilized everything demijohn, all my tools, uh, even the side, because, well, well, you can't get this 100% sterile. You can get it pretty much there. Good enough for our purposes. So step one is uh, I'm going to boil the kettle. So our honey has all been dissolved. As you can see, it is uh, no longer a viscous thing. It's now liquid. My demijohn has now been rinsed of all oh, the tasty goodness. It is as sterilized as it's gonna get. That's why I've got the stopper on. But before I add it in, even though the yeast that I'm gonna be using says it comes with a nutrient, it's, it's honey. It doesn't really have a lot of other things in it. So I'm gonna be adding in a cheeky teaspoon of yeast nutrient and then I'm gonna stir in to my nice liquid just so it all dissolves. So there we go. In it goes. Plus I found if you use, put that in there. So I found that if you use hot water, it dissolves a lot easier, but you can just shake the living bejesus out of it in the demijohn. There we go. So uh, like I said, this is approximately one liter. We got this, we got that. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, so in order to stop our glass from cracking, even though it shouldn't do, this isn't boiling anymore, I'm actually going to strain some of my jus inside of our demijohn. So there we go. My sterile hat, not my sterile, my side has been wiped uh, with the sterilizing solution, so it should all be good. And uh, get one of these and stick it right there. If you get one or two in, it doesn't really matter. And it already comes with an easy pouring spout because uh, I, again, have broken my funnel. I even bought one especially. So in it goes. I mean, look at that beautiful color. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, 
I didn't put it everywhere. That makes a nice change. Now to that, we are gonna add our nice sugary solution. And again, another one with a lid. Here it goes. Now the hot water will counteract the cold water and it should be good. And we're gonna be topping this up with cold water. Look at that. That does look pretty good, I will say. Little bit everywhere else, but it's, it's fine. It's just not a. It's just not one of my videos unless I've spilled something everywhere. So just give this a quick. A little bit of warm water it goes. All right. Just need to top it up. actually looks really dark so we're gonna have to give it a mix so of course hand over the top and shake pretty good I will say and now because we've added the cold water it is perfect pitching temperature that's nice so I guess we better pop in a hydrometer again and let's see what we've got give that a minute to do its thing so according to our hydrometer which has stopped moving now all the bubbles are gone it was right at 1.060 which uh, it's approximately sort of nine and a half ten percent if it ferments to dryness which you know of course we want it as close to that because we want the booze so go on then let's give it a taste oh that's really good it uh it tastes like it tastes like expensive honey i will say it's really floral really fragrant got the nice sweet and um, um, very very tasty i am looking forward to trying this so the yeast i'm going to be using is something a little bit different i saw this thing from cross maloof brew um i actually bought it mainly because it had pictures of a mustache on it and i was like "Ooh, mustache but uh it, it wasn't it, it, the packet is just clear so i feel a bit cheated because i wanted the mustache so uh, literally, I've already added in the nutrients, so we don't really have to worry about how much yeast we put in, even though it says it comes with it. So just a little sprinkling on the top of our sparkling yeast, just like so. No need to make a starter. You don't, you don't have to worry about that. It will sort itself out. The weak will die and the strong will remain. So we'll just pop this on top, like so, take that. It's already got water in the top there, so I'll just leave it like that. Stick it to one side, and because it's around the 10% mark, this should take about four weeks to brew back to being clear and beautiful, and then we're gonna have to give it a little taste. I think that's what we're gonna have to do. So, I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys, giving you some ideas of uh, mixing and matching to try and make something hopefully fantastic from really cheap stuff. So, uh, you know, do all those things other people tell you to do, and uh, I will catch you in the next one. See you later.